Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know me, I'm Sally and I'm a mum of two. I have Hugo who's three and a half and I have Remy who's 11 months. This is going to be the first video of like, I think it might be a four part series all to do with sleep and babies and toddlers. And it's all really kind of stemmed from Remy not being a great sleeper from when he was a baby up until about eight months, which is when I sought out a a sleep guru. And the reason why these videos will come about was because when I shared about it on Instagram and opened up about um, kind of Remy's sleep antics and saying that I was going to be uh, kind of working with a sleep guru, I got so many questions about Remy's sleep and also people sharing their stories about how their children slept and difficulties they were going through and also if it was worth looking for a sleep guru and all that kind of thing. So I thought I would just kind of lay everything out on the table, be as open and honest as I can, and also um, give you a bit of inspiration and hope that you can get a bit more sleep if you are struggling in that kind of area. So I'll start by just kind of telling you um, about Remy and what led us to getting a sleep guru. What I did come to realise after a few months was that Remy generally just liked to sleep on me whilst he was feeding or if he woke up then I need to kind of feed him back asleep. So he developed like a sleep association with feeding. So that's kind of, I felt a little bit guilty because I felt like that was my fault that I didn't kind of try and wake him up after he's had a feed but as a mum when you're so tired, especially through the night, even though the midwife says don't let them fall asleep on you, it's the last thing that you want to do is wake them up for the chance that they might start creating a fuss and not go back to sleep. So once they are asleep, I kind of used to kind of try and tease them off me and then pop him down and he would stay asleep for a while, but then you know how we naturally stir and wake up in the night, he'd do that and then need me to kind of feed him again back to sleep. So he probably wasn't always necessarily hungry, but he'd always feed a lot in the night and sleep on me and that kind of thing. So that kind of went on until about eight months. Um, and that's when I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I feel like I'm up all night and sometimes I'd fall asleep with them on me, which is like one of the worst practices that you can do. Um, I did use a proper pillow around me, so my arms would stay like that, so I wasn't flat or could roll, and he would just kind of be on me there. We wouldn't have any covers over us, so once he'd finish and fall asleep, he'd generally just then lie on his back. Um, but yeah, it wasn't the best practice. Another reason that was also a big contributing factor to me contacting Sophie, who's my sleep guru, was Remy didn't really nap in the day either. So he used to cat nap, so it was sometimes like 20 minutes and then he'd wake up and just like be ready to go for the rest of the day, um, which I wasn't used to that because Hugo used to have like a really good morning nap and then a really good afternoon nap and you know, he had a structure without me kind of forcing it on him. He just kind of created that sleep pattern himself, which Remy just didn't. Some days he would sleep for like two to three hours in one block and that would be amazing. I could get loads of things done in the house or do a bit of work. But then on days when he just literally napped for 20 minutes, I couldn't get anything done. So it was just hard get keeping on top of the house, especially because um, Remy, quite a lot of the time, he wanted to be held a lot, so I'd have to put my carrier on and try and do as much as I could with him on me. And the other thing at night, he was very, very restless. Now, knowing what I know now from Sophie, he was just really overtired. Um, so it often meant that Eamon and I didn't have any evening, and I'd spend all night in the bedroom trying to like settle him and then he'd eventually fall asleep on me and I'd just literally have to call it a night. So he couldn't self-settle or self-soothe so whenever he would wake up he'd start really creating and crying and he'd only kind of resettle once I would feed him to sleep so I felt a bit like a one-man band because although my husband might try to settle him 
in the end I just had to feed him um, just so it was quicker and easier to get him back to sleep basically. And the final thing was is that none of us really were getting you know the really good quality sleep that we all need. That's, that was Eamon, myself and Remy. Um, so that was the point that I kind of thought something has to be done as well because you know sleep is a major thing of everybody's life existence like as much as we need food and water we need sleep to be able to function properly to be at the best of our game um, and especially for babies it helps their brain power and you know the the first two years of their life is where they make the most developmental changes um, and it was actually starting to worry me that he wasn't getting the kind of really restorative sleep that he needed. So it was before Christmas that I contacted Sophie and her kind of page is called Sophie Shut Eye. I will link everything below. When I spoke to her, we had like a consultation first just to kind of see if we felt like we were right to work with each other. And I just felt like I really clicked with her. She got me was really confident that Remy would be fine doing the processes that she's kind of worked with before. These were, I'm going to read them so I don't get them wrong. <laughs> um, for Remy to learn how to fall asleep independently, to learn to resettle himself through the night, to be content staying in his cot all night, and for us all to have well rested and uninterrupted sleep. And for us as parents, for us to know that Remy will be happy uh, when being put to bed by another caregiver, so like our parents or something, so that Eamon and I could enjoy the odd date night, um, which has happened a few times now, so that's really good, isn't it? <laughs> So moving on into how we put all this into action and the kind of different tools and techniques that Sophie gave us in order to kind of work with us to get through this. By the way, yeah, that is generally the amount of time that you work with Sophie is two weeks. So if you kind of think about two weeks in the grand scheme of like a whole year or two years of really bad sleep then that's nothing so what we did straight away is to get a really clear sleep routine together so our sleep routine consisted of white noise using a grow bag every nap time making the room as dark as possible even in the daytime nap i would do the same kind of snuggle up time and then either maybe give him a bottle or something, sing him a lullaby and then pop him down in the cot. We started with the whole plan at night, so we did our bedtime routine. So just to kind of say it quickly, because I'll do another video where you can see all this put into action. Um, but we either start off with a bath or um, kind of a baby massage. We don't bath the children every night. Um, we kind of do it every other night or something like that. Um, so yeah, a bath or baby massage. Uh, just like a really quick one and then we pop Remy in his sleep suit and then his grow bag, we clean his teeth and then we have some snuggle up time where we read a book and then we put on white noise which is like a constant sound. Then I sing him a lullaby and then say the same phrase to him so I will say um, night night Remy, time for sleep now <laughs> or something like that. You create your own little phrase and then I pop him down to the cot. Um, so Remy quite likes sleeping on his side so I used to sleep him on his side and then I'd just give him a little bit of a rub or pat on his back and then I'd walk out the room. The other thing is because we are still co-sharing our bedroom um, you might have seen on a few of my other kind of stories on Instagram, we have a clothes rail in our bedroom. Um, but at night, we put a big blanket over it and then we put that in between our bed and Remy's cot. So that acts like a divider so Remy can't see us. That might sound a little bit mean, but it's for his own good because if he can see us, he'll just want to be in bed with us. It's a natural thing. And actually, I would probably want him in bed with me too. <laughs> Uh, so to save any disappointment on either side, putting up that barrier, knowing that he can't really see us and we can't see him, um, it just makes them 
be a little bit more confident in falling asleep on his own and also not have that temptation of wanting to jump in bed with us. That's why we have a barrier in between hours and that's the, quite a nice little solution if you are having to still um, co-share your bedroom as well. Okay, so that's a bedtime routine. That's what I generally do for the daytime naps as well. But I guess the biggest question is now, you're thinking, well, that's super easy. But what about if your baby cries? I know that this is a really big thing with parents and particularly something that you might dread if you're thinking about sleep training. I know people who just don't agree with leaving their baby to cry, and that's absolutely fine. I don't like leaving my baby to cry. I mean, who does? My personal kind of journey of this is that I had a purpose of it being all for the greater good of Remy, so he had that really good quality sleep that was restorative for him so that it helped his brain development and growth and everything. So as a parent, that was at the forefront of my mind and that's what helped me to kind of overcome the whole crying. Also the fact that I didn't leave him to cry for an unforeseen amount of time. I would come in and try and reassure him and settle him. So that made me feel better. But it's also temporary. Crying is temporary. Remy stopped crying when we put him to sleep after a few nights. And if you can get your mind around that, then that would kind of help you to overcome the first steps that you need to make as well. And don't forget that crying is your baby's way of communicating because they don't know how to talk yet and it's just their way of saying I don't like this but soon they will and they'll realize that actually sleeping is good for them and they'll be a much more happy and content baby the next day so yes I just wanted to give you that little bit of reassurance if that's something that's been on your mind and has kind of held you back from kind of taking the next steps to creating better sleep for your baby and for yourself. <laughs> the method that we decided to work with was called the chair method. After I'd put him down in the cot, I'd rub his back, give him a little pat, and then I'd walk out the room and shut the door. And then I'd leave it a minute. And if there was no sound and he was happy as Larry, then that's amazing and we would just kind of go and enjoy our evening. But for the first few nights of us actually starting this whole new routine, Remy did create quite a lot actually. <laughs> so it was definitely um, a big test for Eamon and I. But the really nice thing that I love about this method is that you can give them as much reassurance as you can and need to do as a parent. After a minute or so, if you started to really create, then I would come back into the bedroom and I'd just try and lie down on his side again or in his tummy or you know just a position that he's comfortable with. The things that I would try not to do is make eye contact, speak to them, or try and hold hands and that kind of thing. I'd basically pop him down in the cart, lying down, I'd give him a pat on the back and then do a long shush and I'd repeat the shushing over and over again as I would with the patting. So it was the constant shh and I would basically do that until he would kind of self settle. The biggest thing for this is that we try not to take them out of the cot. Although Sophie did say in the guide that you can get them out um, if you feel like you really really need to, if they're really creating and you can't kind of handle them crying, then it's okay to hold them until they calm back down again and then put them back down in the cot. The only thing is when I ended up doing that I felt like it made him worse when I put him down in the cot. So after that I tried not to pick him up, so I just tried to give him as much reassurance as I could um, with him still being in the cot, so I'd lean over and try and hug him in the cot and try and just like stroke him and do that kind of thing. And in the end sometimes I'd just kneel down beside the cot and put my hand through the kind of bars and pat him and eventually he did settle. So. 
I think maybe the first night it might have taken about 45 minutes of that. That sounds like a, like, like a really long time, but it goes really quickly actually. And then he fell asleep for a really long period of time. The other thing that Sophie says for when they start to stir at night, because he associated sleep with kind of the sucking to sleep, we had to allow him kind of about 10 minutes. We did start with five minutes and worked up to 10 minutes. The idea behind this is because it takes generally everybody 10 minutes to fall back asleep. From when you wake up, you kind of stir a bit naturally and it takes you about 10 minutes to fall back asleep. Um, into that kind of natural wave again. So when your baby cries at night, when they wake up, if you go into them straight away, sometimes it means that you're not allowing them the kind of time it takes to develop that skill to fall back asleep naturally on their own. So yeah, if you woke at night, I would leave it about seven minutes and then we did work up to 10 minutes of him maybe creating or just whining a bit and that kind of thing and then after 10 minutes if it really built up to a really creating cry then we go back in and do the shush and patting i decided because i guess it's me who's feeding him not Eamon, <laughs> um that we try and get get it down from being so many feeds in the night to one feed in the night so it meant that any time after 2 a.m that we're, I was allowed to give him a feed and before that I would just have to do the shush and patting back to sleep again. This actually worked really well because Remy generally only woke up once before the two o'clock feed and after a few nights he then started sleeping straight from 7pm all the way through to 2pm. If it was about one o'clock, I would maybe just feed him then. I wasn't too strict about the two or one o'clock if it was after midnight. Um, but yeah, and then he'd go straight from then to any time between five and half seven-ish. So I couldn't say that it was the same every day, but it was a massive, massive difference before working with Sophie. It was probably after about five nights that um, we were eventually able to pop Remy down in the cot and then walk out the room and he'd just fall asleep soundly and without any kind of fuss or anything. So that was a massive achievement. After our two weeks was up, um, we were going to aim to move Remy into his own room, but I wanted to do his room up in January when we had a bit more money um, and that kind of thing. So um, I actually spoke to Sophie and I said like, you know, I was really happy with the progress that he made and I'd like to kind of start pushing him through the whole night when he moves into his own room. Um, he's still in our room at the moment because although his room is done, we have no furniture in there and I feel really mean putting him in there when it's just really empty. So we're going to build up to that point. So did we achieve our goals? Yes, Remy can now fall asleep confidently and quietly on his own. Um, now it's really, really easy to do the whole bedtime routine, pop him down in his car, we walk out the room and he doesn't create or cry or fuss. He just kind of knows it's bedtime and it's time to rest and sleep. The same goes for his day naps as well. He goes to sleep great during the day and has a really good, good like one to two hours in the morning and one to two hours in the afternoon as well. Um, so it's great that I'm able to use that time to either, if I'm with Hugo, to have that one-on-one -on -one time with Hugo during that time or if it's a day when Hugo's at nursery then I can just get some work done or house jobs and that kind of thing. So um, it's really impacted our lives for the greater good. It's also meant that Eamon and I have been able to have a few date nights um, where my parents or his parents have been able to put Remy to bed and he's been absolutely great. He, he's gone to sleep fine without any fuss or anything. And if he does happen to have a night where he does make a bit of fuss going to sleep, then we just do the patting and shushing and it honestly calms him right down. I'm so happy. I like never thought we'd get to this point, to be honest. I'm just so relieved that we all get a bit more sleep. He still does wake in the night. At the moment, he does get up at least once in the night. Sometimes it is twice, but generally it's just once. But like I said, once his new room is all ready to go, 
that's when we're going to start working with Sophie again and pushing through the night. So yeah, that's from my sleep story. I really hope this hasn't been too long. Before you go, I've got something really important that I wanted to ask you. Okay, so this is now your chance to uh, be able to get a bit of help and advice from Sophie, my sleep guru. Uh, she's kindly offered her services to answer as many questions as she can. We're going to do a video together where I'll ask the questions and she'll kind of answer them. So basically, if you have any concerns, questions what's going on for you right now please leave them below it's a bit more of a private matter feel free to email me i will pop my email below as well or you can leave it on an instagram photo or something like that one other point that i just wanted to make if you are thinking about doing a little bit of sleep training and the soft approach that i used or you want to kind of talk with sophie then i will leave all her details below she's honestly been the biggest support for me I went for the WhatsApp service so I had her as much as I needed when I was actually doing the whole sleep routine with Remy at the time and she was honestly such an amazing support she really gave me that reassurance and the kind of encouragement that I needed to get through this and Damon as well but one of the biggest things that I would say to you is that you need to be as consistent as possible you and your partner, whoever's putting them to bed needs to do the same thing so that they get used to that routine, it's a familiar thing to them and they know what's coming. Babies don't always like to be surprised. So once they get used to that, then you'll see that they become a lot more happy and content when it comes to nap time or bedtime. Okay, so I really hope that this video hasn't ended up being the longest video in the world, um, but I do hope that you found it useful, and if you're still here at the end of this video, then thank you very much. We're all parents, we're all, we've all been through really tired stages, but it doesn't have to be this way all the time. You don't have to have no sleep just because you're a mum to a baby or a toddler. <laughs> Things can be rectified, there is always a hope, it's always a way so yeah anyway <laughs> I think I'm going a bit delirious don't forget to give the video a little thumbs up if you have found it informative and do subscribe I'd love you to stick around so thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again very soon